All right, chemistry traditional students, welcome to this tutorial on rules for naming covalent compounds. This is Mr. Sheldrup. And Ms. Zinnaker. And we're going to walk you through some of the rules for naming covalent compounds. So the first thing you want to think about when you're thinking about covalent compounds are that covalent compounds contain nonmetals only. So you're only going to be worrying about this when you notice that both of the elements in a compound are nonmetals specifically. And there's three easy rules here. It says the first element in the compound keeps its full name and is listed first in the name. The second element of the compound has the ending changed to IDE and is listed second. That's a common thing we're going to see on a lot of these naming rules. And then the third rule, which is unique to covalent compounds, is that you're going to add the Greek prefix to each name to indicate the number of atoms in that compound. So this is looking at the subscript in the actual compound formula itself. Now there's only one exception when you don't add a prefix, and that's you do not add a prefix if mono is the first element. So we would add mono if it's the second element. It's only if it's the first element that you don't add mono. Now in the middle of this page, it shows us all of the different subscript numbers as well as the prefixes that we could use to go along with them. So let's just do two quick practice problems just to look at how this works, and I think you'll get the hang of it in no time. The first one here says PO4. So if I wanted to, to name this compound, I would notice that both of these are nonmetals. The first one is phosphorus. And I look at the subscript on that phosphorus, and I would add a, a, a prefix to indicate how many phosphorus atoms there are. Because there's only one phosphorus, normally I would add that prefix mono, but here's where that exception comes in. I don't add mono if it's the first one. So I would start off this name with just phosphorus. No mono in front. It's just assume that we only have one of them. Now the second element, oxygen, I'm going to change the ending to IDE, so it's going to be oxide, and this one has a subscript of 4. So I want to add the prefix tetra. Now I can drop one of the extra vowels so it doesn't sound so difficult to pronounce. So this is going to be tetroxide. So I've got the oxide at the end and then the tetra prefix in the front. So phosphorus tetroxide is PO4. The second example here, Cl2O. So we've got two chlorines and one oxygen. Now, chlorine, I don't change the ending, but because there's two of them, I'm going to add the prefix di to the front. So the first part of our name is dichlorine, and then there's one oxygen as the second element. Now, I do add mono if it's the second element. So this one's going to become monoxide. So my full name here would be dichlorine monoxide. Now let's ask Ms. Zinnaker to show us how we do the names to the formulas as our follow-up. Alrighty, so when you go the reverse route, you really want to pay attention to those prefixes that are out in front of the element's name. So this first one we have dicarbon hexahydride. All right, so we can tell that the first element is going to be carbon, and that prefix di tells us that we need a subscript of two. For the next one, we have hydride. So remember, before we change the ending to IDE, so we look on the periodic table to see what element hydride would be close to, and it's going to be hydrogen. So you write the symbol for hydrogen, and hexa is the prefix for six. Perfect. Let's do another one. So when we look at the second example, we have silicon monocarbide. So there's no prefix in front of silicon, but we still write the symbol SI. Remember, this is the exception to the rule of those prefixes. So there's just going to be one silicon present. For the second element, we're going to write down it's going to be carbon. And mono is in front of it, so we just need to keep it as one carbon. All right, there you have it. Easy squeezy, lemon peasy. Tune in next time.